All right, what's up guys? It is the entire Swamp and Swamp crew, minus Robbie, because Robbie couldn't make it today. Sorry, Robbie. Um, and we are doing something new today. We're trying out a podcast. We get a lot of questions on our Instagram or Facebook and all that stuff. Um, and instead of just answering people directly, we figured it made sense to maybe just answer the questions so that everybody can, uh, can hear the answers. Um, we've got a lot of videos out where we talk a lot and people like them. So this way you can listen to what we have to say about hunting while you're driving. Or if you're listening while driving, you can go to the YouTube channel and watch the video version of this um, if you want. So um, just going to make a couple quick announcements. We've got some events coming up that I want you guys to be aware of. Um, first up, on June 11th, um, BHA, Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, is organizing a Youth Archery Day. Um, it's going to be at Gold Coast Archers in Delray Beach. Um, this event is uh, specifically trying to get kids to come out and learn how to uh, shoot a bow. We've got a bunch of equipment available for them to use, so they don't have to have their own equipment. So if you know any kids that would like to try it, um, all the information about it, you can find it on the Backcountry Hunters and Anglers Facebook page. So please go check it out. Hopefully we'll see you guys there. There will also be an archery tournament going on at that event, so bring your own bow too. The next event we got coming up, which is the one we're most excited about, um, is the Saddle Hunter um, 3D Archery Tournament. And this will actually be a tournament where people will shoot their bows out of a saddle. We will set up platforms and uh, tethers uh, throughout the course, and so you'll hop up into the tree and take your shot. Um, and there's also going to be a demo day where we're going to be showing off a whole bunch of gear. We've got a ton of companies sending gear, and all of that gear that's been sent for the demo is also going to be raffled off um, or included as prizes for the tournament. So um, go check out the information on our Facebook page. Uh, you can get all the information that you need. And, um, and <clears throat> You can register, and early registrants will get a free t-shirt. So make sure you go do that. And finally, we've got a kickoff party as well as a scouting workshop. The point of this, um, and that one's going to be on July 9th. Um, and again, you can find all the information on our Facebook page. The point of this one is to get you guys out into the woods and show you what we look for when we scout for deer season. Um, this is a, a great way for us to show you. It's kind of hard to do it in a video. And we won't be on public land. It'll actually be on a preserve. So we're not giving away our favorite spots. So uh, last year was a great success. So please come out and join us for that. And Danny will be roasting up a whole hog uh, for us to enjoy at lunch after the event. That's almost all of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're almost there. Uh, if you guys want to get any uh, Swamp and Stomp merch, you can find our merch store at www.swampandstompllc.com. We've got all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, we got these shirts that Mug is wearing. For those of you that can't see us, it is our camo shirt uh, with a hood, with a front pocket. High pine. Um, the high pine camo shirt. Um, it is an elevated camo so that when you're up in a tree stand, it, you actually blend in with the sky so, um, so you don't look like a bush in a tree. Um, and we have a whole bunch of other stuff. So go check out our merch store. And finally, if you guys need anything for archery season, go check out Skullville Archery in Okeechobee, Florida. Um, it's a great shop. It's got everything that you need. Brandon's a great guy, and uh, we really trust him with our stuff, so you probably should too. Okay, that was it. There you go. That was very well done. You didn't mess anything up. Perfect. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so for this podcast, we are going to try and do something a little bit different than uh than some of the other podcasts out there one we're not going to take ourselves too seriously cheers cheers <clears throat> while we are sitting here drinking um we are going to answer a bunch of questions um and the rule is simple if one of us swears they throw a dollar into the pot if one of us names a spot they throw five dollars into the pot Ooh. and that pot will be used in future episodes uh, to pay for the booze. So, uh, those are the rules of the game. Let's begin. Well, shit. <laughs> oh, he said it already. He's out. All right. I'll do it for the booze. Good lord. All right. So we've got some. We've been expanding our team a little bit. So we're gonna go around the table and introduce uh, ourselves, um, just so you know who everybody is. So. 
John, you want to kick it off? Right. Yeah. Um, John Nenner. I. Uh, wait. What did you want me to say? What is <laughs> no, sorry. I should have told you that. How long you been hunting? <laughs> How'd you get into it? What's your favorite game to pursue? We wanted you to do the first one. And All right. The rest of it. So I started hunting when I was bird hunting when I was twelve. Uh, I started deer and hog hunting thirteen, and uh, I think my father got me into it. Uh, it's a passion of his as well. What else we got here? What's your favorite game to pursue? What's your favorite season? And what's your favorite game meet? So what's your favorite game? It's a toss up. I mean, you know, we all love deer, uh, whitetail specifically. Um, but I think I think my favorite probably would be would be ducks, just because you get to shoot every time you go, and that's yeah. that's pretty amazing. <laughs> I mean, um, I do love hunting ducks. I mean, I, it's, it's a toss-up for me. Like, like I, I get so amped up. I, I know in the morning when I'm headed out duck hunting that I'm going to have a blast no matter what. You're going to have less shells when you, uh, when, yeah. when you look. Yeah. Even if I don't shoot anything, I'm going to at least shoot some shells. <laughs> 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 so, um, that's where it's a toss-up. Don't get me wrong. I, I spend a lot more time in the woods chasing deer than I do on the water chasing ducks. Uh, but um, they're they're both. They're, I, I would say they're they're pretty close together. I can see um, that. Can see um, it. What's your favorite season to hunt and favorite meat? Uh, it used to be muzzleloader, but I switched to archery. Archery is yeah. where I'm at at this point. Um, I I'd be fine if it was archery all year round down here. Really, at this point. Uh, Don't tell the hunters that. Yeah. Well. <laughs> too bad. Favorite game meat? Uh, elk. Oh yeah, I don't. I've, I've never had that. So <laughs> I, I don't know. No, I'm, I, I, mean, I haven't. I haven't experienced my own uh, elk meat. Uh, but my my cousin has been lucky enough to bring down some backstrap from. He lives in Michigan, but he hunts in Idaho. And uh, I, I'm telling you, if I I would I've heard I would like legitimately like I love beef. It's fatty. Now elk is lean. If I had to. Give up beef for something, I could do it for out. Now, what is it? Is it like what's it comparable to? Because I've never uh, had It's elk. comparable to to, to whitetail, but a, a, a cleaner. Uh, it's rich. Uh, it, 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 it's like rich in its own sense. It's not, and it's not. Like, so I've eaten bear. I thought bear was oily. I didn't love it, um, but it's it's really red, like like bear meat. Yeah. Um, Cause like Wisconsin deer is very different from here. Yeah. And they just so fatty. Yeah. It's so good. Well, so but elk is leaner. They're they're still fat on it, but it's not like up north whitetail fat. It's yeah. not because because they're not on those farm fields right. that it's, it's eat, eating what it can yeah. get. Yeah. So it's it. I would compare it more to our Florida whitetail, where they're super lean. Yeah. Uh, you you almost don't see a whole lot of fat. I'm sure it depends on what season. You shoot it in. You shoot it in yeah, archery. It's probably gonna be pretty lean. Or sorry. Yeah. The other way around. Pre well, when it's a pre winter, it's pretty fat. Pre rut. Post rut. Post rut. Don't be yeah, skinny. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, listen. I've only experienced uh, probably two different animals of it, so I'm not an expert on it. But it, I, we'll would, I, I would compare it more to white uh, I'm, South I'm Florida whitetail yeah. compared to North. Uh, like and it. it was it was super clean flavor. It was just good flavor. Cool. All right, um, I guess I'll go next. I'll make it quick. How long I've been? Let's do mugging, aren't you? I just figured we'd go around in a circle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, how long I've been hunting? Like six years now. I think I'm the least experienced hunter here. Um, I grew up in Europe, so it wasn't really an option over there. Uh, how to get into it? I just got myself into it. I wanted to do it. And I started trying to learn, and then eventually met up with Danny, and then we just started feeding each other's addiction and and now i'm just obsessed <laughs> all in i'm all yep. in um my favorite game to pursue is got to be it's got to be the deer i love hunting deer they i just obsess about them all year long but i will say that me and danny hunted geese in wisconsin so and like <laughs> as far as bird hunting goes if i if there was geese in florida i would never shoot another duck like i would just like go nuts on geese that was an amazing experience it, it did leave a lot of thirst to get some more oh, it geese. really did like i really want to go back and do it again like it was incredible flavor compared 
Honestly, I did. I, I've heard people say that geese is like not good. I thought it was tasted like duck. Um, I mean, it's maybe like I don't know, like a little bit stronger of a flavor, but it wasn't bad. Like I, I just took a whole breast and grilled it up just because I wanted to like get the flavor of the meat. Yeah. And, like it was good. So yeah. I, I, I only did it in pastrami, so it's like I haven't had. In any other way, the pastrami which was good, which is phenomenal. But it's the, so good. The, the, the thing with the pastrami, it hides a lot of uh, natural flavor. What did you add for fat for that? No, pastrami was just straight up like a whole breast. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah, I followed the um, deer meat fritter. No, I followed the, what's his name? Meat eater? Meat eater's uh, recipe. Right. Yep. Yeah. I followed meat eater's recipe. Ranella's? Yeah, it was yeah. awesome, man. It's phenomenal. So, um, my favorite season, archery season all day long i obsess about it even in gun season this season i still went in to like archery only there's more than one <laughs> place jesus i went into places yeah. where i could use a gun and i used my bow <laughs> um you shorten that up <laughs> <laughs> um and then my favorite meat God, that look <laughs> <laughs> give, give, give him half a tally for that. <laughs> uh, my favorite, my favorite game meat is um, honestly, people are gonna be shocked at this, but probably squirrel. I love squirrel meat. Like, Bye guys. <laughs> <laughs> but that that hog that I shot the other day was so fatty, and the flavor was so mild. Like if I get hogs like that, it's like a farm hog. I honestly. <laughs> Like, I would Wait. choose that over deer meat. I'm confused. What? All three of you guys went there? Uh, yeah, the Alex three of us, with you? we shot four Oh, hooks. I didn't see a picture of you. I only saw a picture of you and Alex. Didn't you see the video of me popping in with my pistol? One-handed with the camera in the other hand? No, I did not see that. Oh, it, it's there. Some it's some refreshing it's, enough to do. Anyway, oh. all right, so that's, that's my favorite meal. Gotcha. With a mouthful, tell us. All right, Danny, you're up. Okay. <laughs> so, I started hunting, actually, like, actually hunting, um, Ooh, I like that. Is that the Yellowstone? No. That's the same this? stuff. I'm, I no, I just poured this. Oh, yeah, that's Yellowstone. Yeah, it's good. I mean, I've been in the woods since I was, like, seven or maybe nine um, when my dad started taking me. And then uh, I pretty much started really hunting uh, with my uncle and my cousin. As I was, I don't know, 9, 10, 11, 12, pretty young. And then, um, but that was mostly on private property. And then I think right around my teenage years, this really started hitting the public land pretty hard. And then um, I think that's that's that. And then my favorite season is no, archery. Favorite game to pursue? Oh, white tail all day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, like, uh, the goose hunt was really fun, but it does not trump the feeling that I get whenever a white tail walks out in front of me. You mean that, when your stomach starts going crazy? Oh my god, like you hear him on all the videos. As a matter of fact... Hey, just listen to him on any video. He's like, as soon as the deer's coming, he's like... It's like, d defense mechanism, just yeah, like... In every video, it's like, the deer's gonna hear me. He's gonna hear me. Oh, he's gonna... Every so time. Great. As a matter of fact, if you guys can point out three of uh, any of those hidden jewels in those videos, we will send you a sticker pack. Oh, oh man, good one. I like that. Because there are hidden farts in our videos. <laughs> Every one of them. In fact, from now on, when you find a hidden fart in any video, you send us a message and we will send you a sticker pack. Yeah. With, 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 with the, the time, time yeah. You gotta, yeah. Give us time stamp. you gotta tell us the timestamp yeah. and what video it was. Yeah. Well, they're there. They're there, bud. They're not. I got family yeah. members that call me out. They're like, hey, Danny, I heard Plenty. that. <laughs> Anyhow. Well, so yeah, definitely whitetail um, and archery. You know, archery mm -hmm. is my favorite season. Now, as far as productivity, I can I can do uh, archery all year long. As far as productivity and more chances and such, muzzleloader. Muzzleloader is right there because it's the deer really haven't gotten like spooked up yet. You know, they're not going too crazy. It depends where you go. There are some places where they get hit pretty hard for muzzleloader, but. Uh, there's other places where, and, and during muzzle loader, if your muzzle loader doesn't misfire, you, you can do pretty well. <laughs> Which, that happens to all of us. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, it, almost 
I want to say. You should explain. It, as you far explain as like, that. yeah, so because we haven't put a video of that up, and I don't think we're going what? to. No, that, maybe that maybe you guys want to hold off till we get done with this. No, nah, whatever, just go for it. So the what was it? 2020 <laughs> season. At the end of 2020 it last, season, it was last year, not this last. Not season, this past one. 2020. Yeah. So in 2020, um, I we went out to a spot, and um, I'm not gonna give you guys five all this for the booze. So name the spot. So we went ahead, and um, I let my dad borrow my muzzler, my buddy let me borrow his, which I took to the range, make sure it was good. Long story short, I had two really nice bucks come out in front of me at different times, and the muzzleloader misfired on both of them. It was raining the whole time. Um, I had the muzzleloader covered. I actually used the glove tip to cover the barrel, and I had my shirt over it, <clears throat> and it misfired twice um, on two very nice bucks. So that happened, and that's how I ended up my season. So when it did happen, I threw the muzzleloader off the, gut, the tree that I was in. I was about 30 feet high. <laughs> and it hit the floor, and it turned into a bunch of little pieces. It's still loaded in my garage. <laughs> Wait, this was your buddy's models, was it? Yeah, he broke, it, he broke it in half. Yeah, because I'm like, you know what? I don't want this to happen to him. Bullshit. <laughs> I don't know how he would feel about it. So then my dad's like, oh, your muzzle loader is probably the same. So we set up a, a jug and shot it. And it, had I had my muzzle loader, I would have ended my season in a very happy note. So and they were nice bucks. They were very nice bucks. We got them on video, we put them up. It was, it was a bummer. But anywho, um, Archery is by far my most favorite season and favorite meat. Home. My favorite meat, wild game. Yeah, I'm gonna go with um, Wisconsin venison. <laughs> very specific. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be from. Uh, what about Kentucky venison though? Because that was good. Too. Kentucky was very good. Um, but I'm I'm talking about like a pure cut where let's say we're out in the woods, we're stuck there, and you get a, a deer, deers. For your dad, and you get the deers, and, <laughs> and then you cook it up over the fire. Hands down, Wisconsin has it because you don't have much seasoning. You can do it over the fire, just phenomenal. They're already seasoned with yeah. corn. It's so good. Find some wild onions up there. Yeah, you could. Oh man, what do they call those things? Um, scallions. You no, know, there's like uh, there is a name for them. Oh. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. I forget what they're called. Wait, what? It doesn't matter. You can, walk into, have them here you can walk into any direction and have all kinds of stuff. Anyway. Yeah. Oh, the wild right. onions? Yeah, okay. so there's that. You're up. Name's David. Everybody calls me Moe. I've uh, been hunting since I was, I don't know, eight. Earliest memory would be my dad bringing home a pig. And I uh, remember poking it with a stick. I think I was poking his head and I was like, is this his butt? So eight? So that was a lot like four years ago? Yeah. <laughs> How did you get the name Mug? You ever seen the movie Gremlins? Yeah. Mugwai? Yeah. The main gremlin? Yeah. And then Dude, that thing was cute. Yeah, and you give it water. How did you end up with the name? Well, you, if you gave me water, got me wet, or you fed me after a certain time, I was a, a demon child. Yeah, a little gremlin. That's cool. Yeah. So but your parents didn't give you that name? Yeah, they did. That's awesome. They're ridiculous for that. <laughs> I love huh. it. I thank them, because I don't like going by David. That's a really cool story. I like that. Okay. All right. Um, favorite game to pursue? 100% deer. Deer, Love deer, the challenge. deer. Always deer. Favorite season? Archery, just because Always. For, I have never killed a deer with a rifle down here. I've killed plenty of deer with a shotgun out of state. Um, but yeah, just archery. Like 90% of my kills are with a bow. Nice. Favorite game meet? Depends on preparation. If we're going just give a straight answer. What's your favorite? Your favorite meal? What we need? I would go if we're just whatever preparation versatility. I'm going wild hog because even if you have no seasonings and you take a fatty piece of loin off a wild hog or something and you cook it over the fire like you were saying, all that fat's gonna render over it. It's gonna be freaking delicious. But if we're going specific, deer heart in flour, deep fried in Crisco. Okay. I like it. All right. I'm down with that. Yeah. Yeah. It's mm. All right. We made it through the first section of our podcast. Congratulations, guys. Drink. <laughs> oh, Cheers. Man. It's got me sweating, man. That was, that was hard work. That was great. All right. Um, quick, quick, uh, quick questions real quick before we get into people's questions that they sent in. Um, I want to know, does anybody uh, have any special trips planned uh, for this coming season? I want to know 
if you plan on trying anything different as far as tactics go that you haven't done before, and whether you got any new gear that you're trying out. I'll break the ice on this. Make it real simple. So uh, earlier this year, we had this uh, gentleman named Zach down here, and we did a little turkey hunting with him. We were lucky enough to get him on a turkey. So um, we're gonna go up to Kentucky and actually hunt with him. And what's gonna be different from that trip is gonna be my very first out of state hunt with a rifle. With a rifle? Oh, oh, yeah. Private land. Too. Oh, private land. Yeah. Well, so well, that'll be different too. It, but it's it right not, next to public land. It may not be private land. It might not be private land because for the first trip, I'm gonna go up and scout it out and, and that for that I'm gonna take my bow. But for the actual long trip, I'm gonna go up for uh, Thanksgiving actually. And I'm bringing, I'm, with yeah, I'm bringing the family up and such and we're gonna take rifles. I'm gonna have my son, he has a uh, 243 that he's gonna try to get a deer with. And I'll be taking my uh, 300 way back. So, or I may just go ahead and bring the, use the 243 because. <laughs> you know, we'll all through them. You know more deer you're taking with a 243 than any other round in the country? I think it's 30, 30. No, it's not in this house. 243 is not number one deer well, actually, mm -hmm. I, I wow. did. Needed it all. Think about it. Mm -hmm. so I'm pretty excited for that trip. It's gonna yeah. be, it's gonna be really cool. Um, so it's gonna be my first out of state hunt. Blue rifle. So Meat eaters cool. getting a lot of promo from this. They stuff. are. I shouldn't have said anything. I didn't want to say it, but we should add that to the list of things you can't say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no, I mean, I, Meat eaters awesome. He's so. awesome for the community and yeah. he's awesome for the uh, the whole cooking of game. I mean, the guy's got a cooking channel. Is awesome. Yeah. Agreed. Meat eater is on the list of things you can say. Um, all right. Um, you got anything cool going on? We have a cool trip planned. We do. We're going elk hunting. It'll be your second, my first time. But this will be the first time you're doing it with a bow, right? Yes, last year uh, I carried muzzle loader. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do two full weeks? We are. Uh, I oh, believe we are. Uh, I guess we're going to yeah. probably send one of the guys to the airport because. Um, I, I think he's pretty much out on two weeks. My brother's gonna stay, so he's gonna stay. If we're staying, he's not even. I mean, we're staying a full two weeks, but that's all I can do. I know we my get, brother pretty well. We can have this planning yeah. conversation another day. But anyway, <laughs> we're going, we're going elk hunting with our bows in Colorado. OTC that means over the counter, which means you don't have to like wait for to draw a tag or anything. It's just anybody can go. Um, it's also the hardest way to do it, but we're just going to learn, really. The buttons um, for punishment, you know. Yeah, hopefully hopefully I get to hear a bugle. That'll make my trip complete, honestly. So, um, And then, yeah, like I said, I'm going to go with, with Andy to Kentucky. Do you have any other trips planned? Um, I might possibly do a Kentucky hunt. My Kentucky uh, license is good through February 2023, so... I have some work planned up there. I'm thinking it might just land in October and might, might get some. Might well, just happen to accidentally possibly sort of land in October. Be there. I mean, really, just go for like mid November. Uh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't really actually. Yeah, October is pretty good though. Man, uh, late October is like when yeah. it really mm -hmm. starts getting hot. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm going for that. So I'm hoping on that. Uh, even if work doesn't coincide with that, I have some. Uh, I have a buddy up there in uh, Lexington. That I might go. Like uh, some nice cool spots. Yeah, yeah, we we've been all around there. <laughs> we, that's where we went when we went to Kentucky, like two yeah. years ago. Okay. You got any, you got Ohio every year. Ohio, hundred percent archery now. I used to do the gun on every year, but success rates a little you, better. You did pretty good this time. Yeah, the first time I went up for archery three years ago and shot a giant. Never found him. And then went up for gun after that. And it was like, yep, yeah, no archery 100%. So you've seen way more bucks, way more does just running around, more sign. That's why archery is probably all of our favorite. It's the best. It 100%. And I just like hunting close. If you guys give me a lot of crap for it. You do, yeah, specifically. Definitely. I mean, just when wait you're for stepping a, on your toes. Just, just wait for it, guys. There's going to be a video coming this season of him shooting a giant. But there won't be any video of the shot because it'll turn on right. The camera will turn on right after. <laughs> Sometimes you just get so complacent with the sound of a squirrel that you look down and go, "Oh, that's yeah. not a squirrel." How many times does that happen? I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've been in a tree and I'm like, 
oh my god, where did that deer come from? Like, I'm like, I can see everything, and somehow this deer is standing ten yards away from Houdini. Houdini, I yeah. swear. Like, so and then and they do the same thing where they walk behind a bush and they never come out the other side. Yeah. And Dude, you're like, I have a video of a deer. There's nowhere for it to go. I have a video of a deer coming out of a tree. It's yeah. not on the other side of the tree. It walks. And then it walks out from behind the tree. How does I don't even know. There's a reason. I'm sure they they like travel between dimensions. Yeah. There's a reason they're called the gray ghosts. But anyway, I mean, it's because of the filming that we or I at least have really started focusing on areas where I can see a lot further because I just I need to be able to get that camera on. But you do you, man. If you, you hunt, if you hunt knee deep to waist deep water, you hear them coming from like 500 yards yeah, away. There's a, it might be a Sasquatch. I used to say I that do. too, but I, hey man, do you? We love that you're you're doing things differently. Um, you know, people love seeing that, so it's all good. Um, how about uh, does anybody plan on doing anything different, tactics wise, or are we just sticking with what we got? I mean, I'm uh, I'm pretty sure. I tried the saddle last year. It didn't We're not talking about fall it. That's the next question. You should try something different. Tactics, tactics, tactics of finding that's a gear. That's a tactic, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. Fine. that's a gear thing. It's, it's, oh, that's the next question. Right. Right. Hold that thought. Hold, Hold that thought. Minute. Anybody doing any different right? tactics? I got something, but if y'all want to go first. There's a possibility, depending on how successful the early season is, that I might pick up one of my dad's stick bows and dabble with that. If I that's fierce. That it's kind of is, kind of is actually. It's not wrong. It's not wrong. No. It's not wrong. I don't care. I don't care. I'm gonna try and get like 110 yards shooting with a stick and string. Maybe we'll see. Wait, hey, stock wise or tree stand? Well, probably sitting on the ground on oh, okay. knees or gotcha, something. Do gotcha. what my dad did last year. I can't let him outdo me. That's cool. Where did he do that? <laughs> don't set him up. <laughs> <laughs> try to get him up. <laughs> Florida. <laughs> Some money in that pot. So far, we got a dollar. Yeah, I'm going, I'm, 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 I'm going to really, Texas for that we one. We didn't do it really good, guys. He's only authorized for one week. Just saying. Just saying. Getting that out. Okay. I was going to get the sign up. Me authorized? No. Me. no. <laughs> no. Oh. It, okay. I told you last year about me. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm going to try and hunt from the ground a lot more. That's going to be my thing. Uh, now that I live a little closer to the woods, um, I can sneak out there before work. And uh, so I'm gonna be trying to you know, put in short hunts and hunt from the ground a lot. So we'll see how that goes. I don't know. My new tactic for this year is not switching up so much. It works. Yeah, every <laughs> so, year it works. But I, I definitely want to. Um, I would really like to get a deer from a deer's from the ground. That'd be really cool uh, on a spot in stock. I've never done that, so I think that would be great. And if it happens with a rifle, so be it. Let it be. <laughs> Last year's opener, it just like, it just like, opened my mind up to new possibilities. It's so, it's so, it was like insane how many deer and how yes. many, how many close opportunities we had. So that was, yeah. that's one thing I want to do this year is uh, I, I want to dabble in some spot and stock with the bow. Where you want to do that? Um, you want to I want to do it in. <laughs> <Not Florida. laughs> no, we're, we're gonna travel for that one. We need to start drinking more, guys, because like we, we got we got pot to fill. <laughs> well, I Do just paid for bills this time. Oh, you did too. Did um, they just leave it on Fox? They're gonna go pick up Fox my, and buy them. My wife is uh, going to get her MRI, so. Oh, today? Yeah, like, oh, like right now. Eight eight o'clock. She's gotta be there. Oh, oh what the heck? Yeah. Wait, is she coming to play golf with us? Yeah, but when oh. I got a ride in front of you guys, she's gonna meet us there. Oh, it's okay. like five minutes away. Yeah, BC Dubs. It's my birthday weekend. Yeah, so it started on Monday yeah. last week. So we're uh, <laughs> it started on Monday. Last week. <laughs> All right. Um. Anywho, what the heck were we just talking about? Uh, new tactics. New tactics. Yeah, not gonna change tactics. What's you gonna do? Yeah. You said something about your knees and a uh, long stick. What was it? Okay. Okay. One more thing. Just out of water. Yeah, you know, during during turkey season this season, I, I was in like a lot of different places. I was just like wandering around a lot, and it was amazing how many times I run into deer, and like how many times I was able to like use the wind and, and get really close to them. And I got a lot of cool footage, and I just kept thinking to myself, I was like, man, if I had a bow right now, like that'd be a dead deer, you know? 
Um, and I think that during like the four or five weekends I, that I was out there, I think yeah. I had could have killed like three different deer. I'll be honest. Bill season. I feel like that every time I'm scouting preseason. Yeah. <laughs> I know they I know it's different. <laughs> and then season starts and the deer are different. I you know. never see them. I mean you see them from the tree stand, but like you when never they see, see them. you they're like yeah, they like no, they're like I'm out. Yeah, yeah no, it's a different, it's a, it's a different <laughs> animal during season. I get that, but still, like I'm just seeing so many deer, and, and and like the opportunity to potentially chase them on foot, like I don't know, it just really excites me. So I'm gonna try and do that a little bit more. Um, I gotta figure out ways to film it. Yeah, um, I was gonna say that. I think that's gonna have to be something to just plan on keep like, doing. Well, we can do that, but also I got this GoPro mount for my shoulder, so I can turn it sideways and I can actually like. Take a shot. That's, anyway, not to mention that last Sunday <laughs> when we actually uh, went and did some spot stalking, we got some really, really good information from some very seasoned hunters that have done it and successfully. Eric Ruiz, for Ray example, Martin. and Ray Martin. He, 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 you know, those guys were telling us, you know, there were things that we were trying to look for whenever we were trying to place a shot on these animals, and it wasn't going to happen because it just wasn't going to happen. So. We, as archery hunters, we're looking for a clean shot and we're always looking for that spot yep. to be able to aim at. Where when you're spot and stalking. Like a broadside you, shot, right? Yeah, you're looking for a broadside shot, you're looking for that heart shot or lungs. Um, more than likely double lungs is what we typically go for. And during a spot and stalk, more, more times than not, the animal's gonna, probably going to be facing you. So he gave us this really good tip of you know putting the 20 yard pan on the chin. 30, 40, 50, as long as your 50 yard pin or 40 yard pin isn't below the brisket, you're gonna hit vitals. Yeah, and and you, anywhere huge. in there, and any, so if, if it's 20 anywhere to 40. from 20 to 40 yards, you're gonna hit vitals. Exactly, that was huge for me. Because, I mean, that book that I had stand up right in front of me, I could have easily drawn up and got on him. Yeah, but, but I would say that's equipment dependent though, because I would not take that shot, because I shoot a flapper, you guys don't. Okay, yeah, you do. Yeah. Uh oh. I, right, I, I, I've been. Yeah. I've been you mean the Twizzler? Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't no, shoot no, 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 The Twizzler's the arrow. Oh, the flapper's yeah. the, the broadhead. Broad yeah. yeah, no, so I've, I've been shooting a mechanical. I'm probably going to shoot a mechanical again. <laughs> I love the mechanicals, but when you're shooting from the ground, she and it's got to go through thing. twigs and stuff like that, yeah. then, a, you know, a, a fix. Don't shot. Yeah, don't get shot through any kind of um, obstacles. Uh, yeah, because he had that happen at yeah. a spot that won't be named, yeah. but he hit a leaf basically with a little pom pom, and I've had it he hit that deer right where he was supposed to hit it and didn't penetrate because it was wide open yeah. when it hit. The first year I went up to Ohio, <clears throat> sorry about that. First year I went to Ohio, I launched that a uh, like, basket rack eight point thirty yards. And and just outside. barely clipped the basket it. rack up there is like a hundred. Yeah, inches. but no, no. <laughs> I wish, but arrow just barely caught a twig. And it hit the deer perfectly, sideways. Wow, I've, I've done, done that. Boom, boom, boom. It's like, oops. Well, man, whatever. And then that night, shot that giant. But, mm. Yeah, I did that at the spot that you know the spot over there with the oak trees. Sure. Uh, you know what I'm talking oh, about? Yeah, Florida has a lot of them. That was your fault. The tree reached. Yeah, the tree the like saw the arrow and karate <laughs> chopped the crap That's out of it. That's my friend. See, I don't come up with excuses. <laughs> yeah, no. It was it was a beautiful 30 yard shot. I slapped that deer right right in the vitals with the side of my arrow. And then he kicked your broadhead. Right and then as he ran away, he stepped on my arrow, broke, broke it. the broadhead. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was. Uh, you know what? I don't want to talk about it. Last thing. Anybody using any new gear? Uh, I know we are, I don't want to announce that yeah. just yet on this one. So I am going to be using new gear, not nothing like crazy, but uh, oh, so. right now Brandon is putting on a spot hog for me on my, on my boat. I didn't know that. Yeah. What kind? Uh, the, 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 so it's going to be the vertical three pin. Nice. Um, the so, pack. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. So, and it comes with a three point. Since, since I'm going to Colorado this year with the bow, I, I really needed that adjustable sight. Get ready for those 100 yard uh, shots. I'm not taking a 100 yard shot, but no. I won't be afraid to send it a little, a little <laughs> further than I was before. At an elk size target, I will comfortably go 70. 
it, if if I can I'm getting fifty. If, if I think 50. that that the animal's chilling or something, and that bird dog. You you guys know this. This is this it's is the angel right. question. How far is too far? And, and and it really comes down to situations. If if, 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 you, if you've got yeah, if you've got an animal that is chilling, that is not ready to move any second, if it's just grazing, I got no problem sending it. Yeah, I mean it's uh, now I don't expect that to happen with an elk. <coughs> I expect it to come charging in, bugling. Okay? Yeah, you're sticking and, right in the Yes, right I expect chest. to have to take a chest shot, which I don't want to do, but that's the reality of the situation. I mean, people do it all the time. Yes, they it's, do. It's deadly. Um, and so, oh, I didn't know you had more of those. Yeah, yeah, man, we got plenty. We're prepared for this. Oh, oh, we're right. prepared for shit. So, uh, go for it. So that that that's my new piece of gear. Uh, the other new piece of gear is the wife's gone. So. I'll be getting a new camera. <laughs> the wife. Yeah! Yeah! New camera! <laughs> what are you getting? Uh, no, I'm not getting a new Is one. I'm actually same? getting. Oh, uh, he, he's uh, gonna buy that camera. Yeah, right I'm probably buying that camera right there. Okay. It, I'm deciding to go on. He has a lens for it. See, I thought I didn't need it anymore, but clearly I do. Yeah. Well, I don't know. You don't have to use it. No, he needs for you. I, I think he meant like he needed it for this podcast. That's what I thought. <laughs> I think I might be copying you on that. No, you're getting that one. No, <laughs> but it's like a new camera. Yeah, yeah. my camera. Uh, well, kind of I mean, it's I mean, I mean you know hunting. I kind of mean hunting. I know. Uh, I mean hunting gear. Because like, I don't know. people you listen to this and really don't need to buy cameras. Yeah, um, but oh, I mean, they put me down for that fuck. <laughs> Oh, 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 Andy Sandwich! We got he some put, honesty we to got this. Oh, no, the only one I, said, I don't know if you guys have ever had Blanton's, but uh, this is a special taste. I'm going to try out this one that I bought. This is Bird Dog. I feel like I should be drinking all of these with my pinky out because this is about the fanciest you will ever see me drink. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, but oh my gosh. Gosh. No, I'm glad I didn't tell right. I wasn't looking at them like, whoa, that's enough. You want the bird dog? Yeah, man. That's a fun stuff. I feel like you need to the top of okay. the Get with the party, bro. Let's do this. I'm carpooling. Uh, yeah, we're all carpooling, man. <laughs> the, girls are, the girls are driving. driving. My ride oh, left. So. Oh, oh, we got another one. Got another one. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a dollar, right? It's only a dollar. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> you're good, you're good. All right. Um, I can't golf now. <laughs> I'm really not. What golf place are we going to? I have no idea. Five bucks out of them. Getting right. in the car with strangers, and I don't know where. I don't, I don't think we really have any new gear happening. I mean, you and me got a little bit of new gear, but we're just gonna say. Oh, no. oh. We're just gonna say, move over. You just you're locking it. I gotta ace my butt, here. you know. Yeah. All right. The new butt that you got. We got some new gear coming online with the Swamp and Swamp crew. You guys are gonna have to wait for that probably next week. Well, actually, it'll probably drop before this. We're gonna have it all over. There's gonna be a. You're not gonna miss it. You're not gonna miss it. You're not gonna miss it. There's some pretty epic new gear coming in the Swamp and Swamp lineup. So stay tuned for that. So excited! I'll throw this out there. Uh, I'll probably end up with a new muzzle loader this year. Hey, this is new gear for you. Oh, this is new gear for me. He's gonna be rocking the high pine camo shirt. This this is gonna happen this year. This is gonna be. We're gonna, we're gonna what, what throw away that getting? sitka that I wear. Fire stick? <laughs> what muzzle are you getting? Uh, Say fire stick. I only get one, dude. This all freaking bad. The, the, I'll be getting, I'll be getting the CVA. Um, I guess so you might have missed three hundred bucks. You don't have the Acura dude, LR. He has the Magnum though. I don't it's, want it. I have a CVA. Yeah, uh, a thirty-seven I, inch barrel. I've, I've been happy with my, <laughs> I bought a CBA, uh, I, I bought a CBA Eclipse <laughs> when I was 14 years old, okay? CBA is And CBA. it has carried me until now some mistreatment on my part it is of not doing well. And it's time for an upgrade. I always, just forget it's like to take out, I always forget to home load mine and then when it's seasoned again, I'm like, Oh, oh, there's a biscuit yeah. in there. So there's I a shot, bullet in there. Ooh. I shot mine. Uh, I shot mine one year. Uh, the whole stack. And no, <laughs> Two I, bullets. I left it. I didn't clean it. Oh, yeah. And I forgot about it. And I didn't hunt the next Ooh, year. That's and I forgot about it for two seasons. Like and the barrel's so pitted at this point that it's... That's why you got 
yeah, yeah. that black corn 209, man, it really doesn't corrode anywhere near the way that the other stuff does. You can leave your butt loaded your, your four years in a row. We got to test them right here. And I believe it. I've done it. <laughs> it's fine. I believe it. I have left it loaded every year that I've had the gun, and it's like one of the cheapest guns you can get, and it still is attacked. My gun right now was $129 when I bought it when I was... Stop doing this one. 14. Sorry. Your table's fine. I don't know. We're changing it. All right. That's what do you guys say when we get into some questions Let's from our subscribers? Who wants to take the first? Right, Who wants to pull the first question? Danny, do it. Uh, all right. Hey, or, what I want you to do is pull out a question, and I want us to mention where this question was submitted, which I put at the end of the question, so that people know that they can submit questions to us anytime through Instagram through Facebook, through email, just let us know you want us to answer it. You don't have a Twitter? Honor? We don't have a Twitter. Not yet. Please, we're almost there. No. We don't. We also we don't have a TikTok. We're getting no. it. Yeah, because you got us banned. I got us banned with one video of a dust video. Of a coot killing itself by flying into the side of my boat while I was driving. <laughs> I'm driving my boat and it just flies you know into the side of the boat. TikTok and doesn't need us. They don't need us. It straight <laughs> kills itself. Like it is dead. That's, is that the, can I say the same thing when that doe ran in front of our truck? That what? doesn't quite work. The same what is that? <laughs> oh, so, I didn't even mean to set you up there, but like I don't remember that. Oh, you weren't there. This was years ago. Oh, oh, we oh, shot. Oh. It. It ended up getting shot. He said our truck while looking at me. I was yeah, like, you said oh, it like oh. you were supposed to know about it. <laughs> So uh, we were shooting at it, but it ran across the road. An F-250 is a deadly caliber. Yeah, <laughs> it sure is. But All right. What is so, okay, guys, guys. Real quick, we're getting out of control. <laughs> we have like four drinks in. It's kind of the point. Let me, so basically, um, if you guys want to get in touch with us, we are very responsive on Facebook, Instagram, but and not right now. YouTube. Yep. So not if you have right any now. questions, make sure you hit us up there. And uh, yeah. Right, and so this, we'll answer these questions at the end of the podcast when we've had a couple drinks, so you're more likely to get an even more honest answer. Depending on who. What are you talking? We're always honest. I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's going to depend on who picks up the question because I mean, some we, of us are very secret. The further we go into this night, the more chances they brought me alone. Not here to defend them. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got a Facebook. Should I Facebook do a little question. intro for Robbie? No, no, he'll do it. Hold on, I'll wait till the next. Are episode. these questions loaded? Loaded. Like to try to like get us to spot drop. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Honestly, these are these are legitimate questions that no. people send into us. All right. All right. This I question's from Todd. Most, I haven't even read most of them. Todd <laughs> yeah. Riker, one of our Patreon members. What a cool guy. And that's a good uh, segue to mention our Patreon. If you guys want to support our channel, we don't really get paid much by the YouTubes. We really don't make any money on this. But As you see, we're not in the studio. We're literally yeah, in we're Danny's the, kitchen. Literally <laughs> sitting in Danny's kitchen. Um, but if you want to support the channel, Patreon is the best way to do that. Um, and in fact, most of what we do is funded by the Patreon. So we really appreciate all of y'all. And if you want to join it, it's patreon.com slash So Take here's it a, away. Here's a good question. How quickly do you need to skin a deer out and get it on ice before the, the meat doesn't spoil? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break this off before I pass it off to Mark. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say this is situational. If you're out of state, because we do have some followers out of state, and obviously if you're well below 30 degrees, you don't have to worry about it. Hang the deer up and you can actually bleed them out. Skin them before they freeze. Yeah. I'm going to disagree with skin, pretty much everything Danny is about skin to say. It, skin it before you freeze, um, and then go ahead and bleed it out. If we're here in Florida, which obviously Todd is here in Florida, you want to... Although he might be moving to North Carolina. We're not going to lose Todd. He's not going to move. We want to I'm keep gonna, him. I'm going to put some words in I for almost invited uh, him engine. to join this podcast. Okay. And okay. then he told me he was moving. You're doing this. So, I'm going to go ahead and say, um, for my answer, I'm probably going to go around and everybody's going to give an answer, is skin it out as soon as possible. First gut it out. Go ahead and skin it, and then um, get it on ice as soon as possible. How and many then, hours? So, as far as like hours quick. go, like, what's the moment at which the deer is like, you just got to throw it in the canal and let it get I'm, right? I'm going to go ahead and be honest and tell you guys that we've had more than six to eight hours before the deer got on ice. 
and they were just fine. Hmm. Mark's gonna tell you how you did it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I've talked with a lot of wild game butchers about this, and uh, you have a lot more time than you think you do. The problem mm -hmm. is, a lot of times when you, when the deer's been laying out for a long time, it's probably because you gut shot it, and a gut shot means that a lot of like toxins, gut no nope, gut contents and poo are Thank leaking you. out the side of the deer. It's gonna smell bad no matter what when you find that deer. And so a lot of people smell the deer and they go, oh, nope, that's gone bad. And they don't bother cleaning it. But you can't make that judgment until you get it out of its skin, you get the guts out of it and you rinse it off. Once you've rinsed it off, then you can really like smell the meat. And if it smells rotten, yeah. The meat, not, like, not the content of the stomach exactly. and everything else around it. If the meat smells rotten after you've cleaned it off, then it's definitely a questionable situation and you should use your best judgment, but... I'm gonna go ahead and say that it's similar to cooking a piece of chicken or a piece of hog that you can't tell if it's cooked all the way till you cut into it. Because right. the, the interior is where you hold that... Uh, that yeah, you gotta, you gotta go through the process to figure out if you can keep it or not. Yeah. But what I have found is, is that I've had this happen two different times and one of them, I thought I gut shot a deer and I left it overnight and I went to find it, found out that I actually hit lungs and it died immediately. So it was laying from like five o'clock like in the afternoon hours. until like 10 o'clock in the morning. In 12 hours at least. At least. And I, in you Florida. know, I, I talked to a butcher. So it was like, it was like 75 degrees overnight. South Florida. And, and I talked to a butcher about it and he, and we actually have a video about this, and he basically told me what you can do is give it a, what, like he called it an acid wash. Um, you use half vinegar, half water, rinse it down and then pat it dry. It'll kill whatever bacteria have started growing on the outside of that meat. Um, and then you get it dry um, and let it sit in a cooler for a few days. And if over that amount of time that it's sitting in a cooler dry, if it starts stinking, Unfortunately, you're gonna to have to get rid of it. But if it if that smell goes away, you're good to go. Yeah, I'm also gonna go ahead and say it's gonna depend on where that animal dropped. Yeah, I mean, it like it's all dependent. But I'm saying this yeah. test of like, you know, rinsing it down with a with an acid wash, as yeah. they call it, yeah. um, and drying it out, and then letting it sit for a few days. That's either gonna allow that back. Like, it's either gonna tell you whether that bacteria has had. Um, too much time to establish itself, yeah. or whether it's whether it's salvageable. Yeah. Uh, they if need it moisture, starts, exactly. They need oxygen, oxygen. and they need something yeah. to eat. That so, buck that my dad shot uh, this past season, and he where was it at? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, uh, in that, Florida? No, I'm just I'm Florida, yeah, I'm more states. So the Florida one. So okay. was out of state. Eight, people, what they, other name was that? He shot that with his recurve at like ten yards and. I mean, he's that was a, a nice eight bar, right? Yeah, that, he killed my buck that I was say. Um, but he, he <laughs> shot him buck. somehow, Your arrow buck. deflected, and uh, hit it in the femoral artery. That deer only ended up going 100 yards, but no blood trail, and it jumped off the trail, and it dropped under a myrtle in a puddle. He shot that deer at 7.30 in the morning and found it at 5. It wasn't bloated, and then it took us another two hours to drag it out. It was a two-mile drag. A buck that I shot a couple years ago, a muzzleloader, hit right in the heart, no guts, nothing. Ended up dropping 30 or 40 yards and went through a thicket, no blood. Never found it. Found it at, well, I looked for it, didn't find it, then I said, whatever. When I came back, found it. I think it was 5 o'clock, but it dropped in the sun. It had been in the sun all day. It was bloated, and I, the first thing I thought was, let me cut it open, see how the meat smells. Sour, rancid, stunk like hell. Yeah. Cut the rack off of it. Stunk like what? Hell. It was not a curse word. No. <laughs> you don't want to add I'll give a dollar to it. You don't, you don't want to add an adjective to that? <laughs> Heck, heckin'? <laughs> Heck hell? All right, carry on. But yeah, that deer, it was dead a shorter amount of time. And, and the meat went bad. It was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was disgusting. Like, I, the buzzards were all over when I found it. It happened when buzzards were... Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely situational. If it's laying in the well, shade, it's a very different game. The, the, that's like a lot, of, a lot of people up north. They'll, they'll right, shoot a deer and then they'll be like, okay, I think I may have got shot it, we'll go get it tomorrow. Yeah. But those people are dealing with 
temperatures at 50 degrees yeah. at night, 65 it, degrees. It's so it's very different. Here in South Florida, it's like we're subtropical. It's like, yo, meat lasts a lot it. longer than so. you think. And look at other countries how they just hang meat outside. And yeah. there's flies all around, but obviously, if you're accustomed to whatever bacteria is going to grow on it, um, I got, you're used to eating that. Go ahead, uh, I, I got a couple things on this. Um, buzzers specifically uh, can smell something in the intestines. Uh, when, when, when they bust open hmm. and they'll be on it a lot quicker than anything else. Um, I don't know what it is, but if you're interested, you can look this up. Uh, number two, I've had experience with this. I gut shot a deer, a muzzleloader, when I was younger, and uh, a buck, a, a, a nice eight point, and I shot that? it around, I shot it around nine o'clock in the morning. I went to get my dad, we took us maybe an hour to find it uh, after we got back to it. So I, I found it about noon, I shot it at nine. I didn't, the mistake I made was I didn't just gut it right then and there. Hmm. We you get those guts out is yes, important. That's yeah. really important. Because it allows air to uh, get into that well, cavity. It also so doesn't, cool that doesn't let all that, that stuff heat. just yeah. stay in there. Mm -hmm. um, we we took that that deer to a local busher after we gutted it and everything. I wasn't happy about it. It smelled rank, uh, and I wasn't happy about it at all. The way it smelled, we got it processed anyways. We ate a few pieces of that we ate that strap and stuff, but a lot of the other meat had this rank flavor to yeah. it. Now there were two option, two possibilities here. That buck had a really thick neck. Its its glands were swollen. Uh, it was full rut. Yeah. Move on. No different. Got it. So there was a situation. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and. This add is this. weird. I just want to mention real quick that he starts talking a lot slower when he starts drinking. Yeah. The buzzer. Thing was there was a situation where like, there's a video of it when hey Mark Mark shot a doe. Which doe? She was a tiny doe. Where was it? Was it the one in, uh, that I that I? The deer crossbow. That one. So Mark oh. shot a doe. It sat Dude, out. Dude, I had shoulder surgery. Come on. Listen, Throw a rock at it with the other hand. Listen, he shot a doe. It, it was a crossbow. Ugh. It sat out in the in in <laughs> the palmetto. It was like out in the sun. Yeah. Is that the doe we ate? Yeah, we ate it. So okay, so we ate Mark that was night. there. Mark was there earlier. And you were afraid us. to eat it. Mark was there earlier before him. I'm very picky with my food. You know, I don't like. It was like one of the most bar tender, hogs. It was like one finish. of the most. Oh, You're sorry. doing the thing. Sorry, 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 sorry. I don't like bar hogs. I don't like like I've I've, ha I've killed some massive hogs that have just tasted disgusting and it made me taste that and other animal and uh, like other hogs, store bought hogs. So it's one of those things that like I'm very careful with I don't want that to happen with me with, with deer because it's one of my favorite animals to chase so Mark shot this doe 13 hours later we find he finds a doe whatever he gets it luckily she was like three days old so there wasn't enough stuff to ride <laughs> <laughs> she was she was like a ninety. Old. She was like a ninety pound doe. Ninety okay. pound doe. She didn't have any spots. That's a normal. Yeah. That was a live. That was like a, It was a normal. It was a normal, normal Florida doe. doe. But that deer was the most tender. And it the was most, beautiful. It was it so was, delicious. And this is the first time I've ever heard Danny admit this. This is well, called no, dry I'm aging, not. guys. Yeah. It, it, it breaks down the exactly. enzymes. It 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 makes your Meat tastes Dude, better. We had a discussion. It. We were like, if it's did, 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 did we just dry it? age this deer? That's not how it works. Oh. It's like video. <laughs> fucking video. Give me a fucking dollar. Two dollars. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> no! Yes! He got five dollars. Oh! <laughs> 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 I high five my glass. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, by the way, the place that he just named, there's no deer there. No, that I didn't even hear it. Out of there. I heard it, but I'm ignoring it. <laughs> what did I say? I don't know how many even, people. Even watch. when you say it, we're still gonna bleep it out. Yeah. I don't know how many people. Wait, watch wait, it. wait! We're gonna bleep it out for him, huh? We're gonna bleep it out for everybody. If you still pay your five dollars. All right.
I don't know how many people watch their own podcast, but I might. I'm gonna go back and watch this because this is gonna be funny as heck. Heck, can't get me yet. Oh my god, we're doing good. I'm like thirty dollars one, but we're doing good. This is like the most surprising thing is that you and me haven't sworn once. I'll tell you. What I'm, you doing, I'm doing this what? shit on purpose. Oh, I got another one. All right, all right. Anyway. So what I was saying is like you know, it, it, now. Yes. We that that W shot was like Don't dry know. aged with her cuts in. That's right. And the little back strap oh things that we made they were so phenomenal. It was, it was so phenomenal. good. So, Wait, so was good. it was so, it the back straps or the inner loins? No, we made no, little the lollipops. Strap. How big were the inner loins? The inner loins we left. Honestly, when you shoot them in the guts, yeah, yeah, no, no, I was just saying. We shoot them in the guts and you just gotta forget about the lollipops. We made lollipops. Yeah, the little deer lollipops. Yeah. So I mean, I guess the the moral of this story is if you. If it takes you a long time to get a deer, you just got to do a due diligence. You took this animal's That's life. a long question, guys. Take it, take it, right. clean it, skin it out, rinse off the meat, and smell it. It's the only way for you to know if that meat's gone yeah, bad. Exactly. Because, I mean, sometimes it is absolutely worth the extra effort, and, and it might be a little questionable at first, but I promise you it is worth you taking that. Even, yeah. even so, if it's questionable. No, moving, we're done with this moving question. Answer, moving forward, moving hey. forward. The, the other questions that we don't get to today, we'll get to in the next podcast. Oh yeah, there's plenty of them. So we're please keep sending questions. This I'll, is, we're moving forward. Say. We're going to do this. The answer is, it's very, very dependent on the, yeah, it depends situation. on the circumstances. Let's but go. no matter what the situation, you can still do what I said. Yes. Figure it out. Yeah, 100%. So, yeah. All right. Good. Next question. Make next one a little bit shorter. Uh, uh, I, I can't help it. Line. I can't help it. This is natural, man. This is natural. It's like oh, this is a good one. No, oh. this is a good question. So this was somebody sent this to us on Facebook. What do buck beds look like in South Florida habitats, and what's the best way to find them? Mug's excited to enter this. Mug is so excited. Go. They look like beans. I call them beans because the shape of them is a freaking bean. That's, that's true. I yes. do, I do get that. Best way to find them. But can you be more specific than that? Like, the, uh, wait, wait, they, like what the, do they look the like? The grass is like pressed yeah, down. Yeah, it looks like in a bean figure, shape. Sit in the grass and for five minutes, get it up, look at it. It's gonna look like a depressed. Like if you like, lay in like, like the, you put a three foot bean in the ground. Or yeah, it's like if you lay in the fetal position. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask a question here? Now they said specifically buck beds. I'll. Deer beds are going to basically yeah, look like beds. That. Yes, okay. beds in general. You can't tell right. them, but yeah, that's, that's what it says. Buck beds. So buck beds are very different. But, but, are very different. To but distinguish. There's what, usually going to be a bunch of rubs around it. Yes, that's exactly what yeah, I was yeah. about to ask. If it is a buck bed, inevitably there will be lots of buck sign nearby. Home because, territory markings. Yeah. <laughs> right, because these if these bucks are bedding in that area. They're really spending a lot of time there, so there's a really high chance that they're going to be like rubbing up trees nearby. So but you will find a lot of rubs. A close side to note: a buck bed. It's, he's not going to have one bed, regardless of what anybody says. No, in my no. Opinion, Florida is different. Beds. Yeah, Florida. Even is any other not, state, wind dependent, time of year dependent, pressure wind, dependent. Especially yeah. if it's a mature buck. Yes. Yes. There's wind also, dependent. The best way to find it, there's no freaking Chico do it. Walk, 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 yep. and walk some more. And when you think you're walking up, keep freaking walking and keep scouting. Keep so walking. So I kind of like re- start marking them. That's, when I wrote that, out this that's question, very good advice. when I wrote out this question, it was kind of like a really long question, and I kind of shortened it up. But part of it was like, what kind of habitat are you looking for to find buck beds? And and I think you hit it. Dry you, spots in the middle of a swamp. Is where I will key on. If I can look at Google and see, find a little tiny island, or even if it's a four foot by four foot. Well, piece, that's if you're dealing with a really wet area too. Though. Most of Florida, at least South Florida. I don't. I mean, that's there's, a lot, there's a lot. There's a lot of places. Aren't many places that I feel like I hunt. But a buck will also. Florida. There's a lot of places where you'll have a lot of dry areas sort of dispersed but throughout. I've, I've seen bucks. I've found areas that down in water. I have too. Yeah, yep. I've, I've seen the deer. Just about just sleeping the with just a yeah. yeah, and I've had old timers tell me out in the sawgrass. That if they like they've been chasing them, that they will kick that buck up, and the only thing they will see is his, his snout, like his, his mouth above the water. His whole head rack will be kind of above. Like I don't know how true it is, but I've had a couple people tell me that, and it'll just be his nose he's hiding because yep. he knows the buck he's chasing him. Wow, They're smarter than you think. Yeah, um, Tangent, buck, buck beds in Florida. I mean, it's 
the problem with with florida is that we never get a die down of plants it's always green yeah, always. and so yeah. buck have like bedding habitat can be anywhere and so what i have generally found when it comes to buck or just i'm just gonna say deer beds in general like a deer bed you know you'll usually have a buck bed nearby but just deer beds in general um it'll be some thick habitat that's probably about a little above waist high high enough that they can put their head down and you won't be able to see them but low enough that they can put their head up and see over the top and a lot and, of and, times hold on, let me let me finish my thought <laughs> what i have found is that if i find a, a like a like an intersection of trails where there's like super fresh tracks like lots of tracks i have found that if you find those spots you find the area closest to that that meets that criteria of being like you know chest high plants a visible thicket where it's thick and they can disappear but they can stick their head up and see right over it and see what's going on yeah that's where i have found buck beds like and, the, and then that's not always going to be the case but i have found that to be the case a lot of times though usually wherever that bed's going to be it's going to be on the predominantly downwind side because they want the thicker cover to their back uh -huh. so that they can hear whatever is coming or would it be upwind they want to be I mean, able to smell, smell what's in front of them and hear what's coming from behind. Yeah. That's how I've always found it. I mean, it. I think that's generally more the case with like mature bucks, which yeah, we don't really have a lot of in Florida. Most beds I've found are like that, though. Really? In all honesty, yeah, 100%. Uh, I've mean, also found plenty, or not plenty, but I've found some pretty kick ass bedding spots. I mean, go ahead and put me down. Nah, that's not a real swear word. No, that's, yeah, I'd put it in. Too long. Uh, Just let's be they, can, <laughs> they can say that on the radio, so yeah. I wouldn't even put that on there. Oh, yeah, like, oh, I, no, that's not a real swear word. Yeah, well, we're trying to make money. Like a real, a real swear word would be like, like fuck, fuck, me? Okay. fuck shit. I'll get bucks. Hey, if, if we're going to LK Slew. <laughs> no! Lurk it down! Oh! He just threw it. Just try to lie. But, anyways, what I mean, we're going to OK Sloop. We're going to go ahead and say that, okay, the bucks there, for example, are going to go ahead and, and they're going to vary dependent on the water. Yeah. And I, I literally saw all of that's, the bucks that I had on camera too. in the water. Yeah. And I'll, they were in a pond and they were all staying in the pond. I'll tell you. And, very, and when we hunted there, I mean, when that, I, remember that little buck? Remember the little guy? I got video of him. And he came from the, from he, the swamp. He came from the swamp. The deepest part of the thing. And he place. walked past yeah. you at like well, chest deep water. Yeah. Then he crossed the slough where his all his was sticking out was his yeah. neck. He came, came right to me and then just kept walking. And in the direction he walked, it was water for a mile. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So out. see what you where you'll find me is out where he came from because I will practically swim. He actually came from the road. Bruiser oh. Bruiser was literally right. laying down so, in the water next to so, you. Yeah. So it's like in my, in my experience with the, the whole bedding mm -hmm. thing, uh you know it, it honestly seems super random to me. Uh I I I've seen so many I specifically does. I I don't see I don't I don't see bucks do this as often, mm -hmm. just just stop and, and, and lay down in, in, in places that don't even seem like just bedding a random areas. And, and, and they'll be there. Yeah. I'll leave in the middle of the day and come back in the afternoon and that doe will pop up. Yeah. And, and then I'll never see her bed there again. Uh, I remember watching a, a buck in um, a, a place that we hunted in the, the opening weekend. Yeah, where was it? Oh, oh, one of those places? The places that we hunted opening weekends. Just give us a and I'm like, I'm sitting there, I'm sitting the there most. like... I don't even know where this spot is. Just by <laughs> I, I do. Anyway, so. I'm sitting at like there's a cattle pasture, you know what I'm talking about? There's a lot of those. Okay, things. whatever. Anyway, I'm watching this buck, it's like running towards me. I'm like, this thing's going to run right up to me. And then it just disappeared. And I was like, what the heck happened? And I get the binoculars out and start looking for lays it. Lays down under and a And finally, I realize, he's, yeah, he's laying mm -hmm. in a pond, head sticking mm -hmm. out of the water, under a myrtle. He's just out in the open. And he's just, like, sitting there, like, and I have video of his head just sticking out, like, looking I'm out. chill. I got and he it. laid there for, like, 20 yeah. minutes, and he got up and kept going. Yeah. yeah. Two more little things to say and on this. So, that's one of my It better be little, because we yeah. got to wrap this up. Hey, uh, why's my door kick, open? Kick, kick-ass spot. Lots of doors open. A, a kick-ass spot that we found years ago, me and the old so man. So we're just going to go with ass. Ass is whatever. fine. Ass is a, <coughs> ass is a fine word. A, a, a spot it. that me and the old man found years ago was an island out in the middle of a swamp. And my dad ended up, I found a bed. 
the bed was on a little palmetto or a palm tree tussock of mud that had belly hair all on it and rubs all around it. He ends up putting his climber in this tree. Two days after sitting there, the buck comes and beds right under him. And I end up getting the text. This was the first year that the antler restrictions went in. And I'm 100 yards from the other side of the island. He goes, what's the antler restrictions again? Yeah, we'll shoot a tree curve. Ends up shooting over that deer's back at like 40 yards. Try this. All right. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's all we got time for today, guys. Um, we got to get going. We have an appointment, or not an appointment, a reservation. We're going to go whack some golf balls. Whack the for fuck my, out of some golf balls. We're going to go. Day. There you go. Where are we going? Hey, 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 no, no, the no. drive shack. <laughs> no, no, $5. What, what, what are we going to play? We're going to play a game of whack fuck. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Uh, we appreciate. You I had to get one in. <laughs> we appreciate you guys tuning in to our very first podcast. If you guys dig it, leave a comment if that's something you can do. Because I don't know anything about podcasts. Or go to the YouTube channel and leave a comment there. You can put it on YouTube. You can yeah, it's going to be on YouTube, but I don't know how these podcast things work. I gotta you figure can put it on Spotify, too? I, yeah, but i got to okay. figure out how this works. You'll be like, like, I, I kinda like read, comment, subscribe. I got, I got some insight on this. Send us a letter. <laughs> no, no, this is my 1800s. I'll I kinda, it, Quill. Snail mail. Guys, guys. <laughs> I, anyway, I kind of read about it, so I have a general idea. But either way, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be awesome. If you guys liked it, let us know somehow. Um, and we're going to try and do these as often as possible. Um, and if you got questions you want us to answer, send them in. we still got a bunch of questions that we didn't answer today. We'll try and get to them next time. Um, so, cheers. It's been good, guys. Let's go celebrate. The birthday. The birthday. Peace out, guys. Wait, wait.